How's it going everyone and welcome back to Deck Ready. Today's video is going to be a big one and an important one. I think a lot of people are gonna wanna know how to do this because right here I have the 64 gigabyte Steam Deck and I really wanna upgrade the storage in it. So right here I actually have the 2230 SSD drive you need to upgrade the internal storage of the Steam Deck. And before I jump into this entire process, if you enjoy this video, help me out by subscribing and setting your notifications to all. There are a few different things you're going to need. First of all, again, the SSD, that's the most important thing, obviously. After that, you're going to need a flash drive to put the recovery image for SteamOS on. This one's 256 gigabytes, well above what we need it to be for this process. And if your flash drive is USB 3, like this one is, you're also going to need an adapter. This is just a simple USB 3 to USB C adapter. These are cheap, you can get them pretty much anywhere. You can also use a USB C to 3 hub. I'm going to go to the most broad and most general here. You can do this process on a Linux machine, but it's easiest to do on a Windows machine. That's how I did it when I tested this out last night. So yeah, you're going to need a Windows computer and you're going to need some software. So we'll get into that as we work our way through this process. And then the very last thing you're going to need is an iFixit kit. Now you can use any small screwdriver set, but you also get this little pry tool and a guitar pick with the iFixit kit. So I would go with one of these if I were you. So the first thing we're going to have to make is a bootable drive. So take your flash drive, plug it into your PC here. After that, head down to the description and click the link I've included for the Steam Deck recovery image. You can actually find it very easily by just Googling Steam Deck recovery instructions. It'll come right up. Right there on the page, it has a step-by-step -step guide on how to do this. So download the recovery image first. And then after that, in step two, it says prepare a USB key, eight gig minimum. So yeah, 64 gigabytes was well above what you actually need. And it says on Windows, we recommend using the Rufus utility. So if you click the link to Rufus utility, it'll take you to the download page, download that app and just start it right up. So once you have Rufus installed, start it up. And once you plug your flash drive in, it should autofill as the device in the first fill in box. And then in the second one, you have to select by clicking the select button, the actual recovery image you just downloaded. I downloaded it last night. It should be called Steam Deck Recovery one.img.bz2. And then you hit open. And then everything is good to go. So when you hit start, it's gonna warn you that everything on the drive will be destroyed because it's gotta format it. And now you play the waiting game. This'll take about two or three minutes. It is not a long process at all. All right, so when Rufus finishes up doing what it does after about three to five minutes, you just take the drive out because it is good to go. This is your Steam Deck recovery image. And now we gotta get into the hard part of this whole scenario here, which is taking apart the Steam Deck, which is kind of scary, honestly, because yeah, yeah, you gotta take out a few pieces to get to the actual NVMe slot on this bad boy. So first things first, we gotta completely power down the Steam Deck. So I'm gonna hit the Steam button, I'm gonna go to power, hit A, and I'm going to shut it down. Okay, now that the Steam Deck is turned off, I'm gonna also remove the SD card. I have a ton of games downloaded to this, so I'm praying that when I reinstall SteamOS, it just accepts it as is and doesn't format it and make me re-download all those games. All right, so with the Steam Deck completely powered off and the SD card taken out, I'm gonna start taking off the back of the Steam Deck. And for this one, you basically just need one screwdriver. It's a Phillips head screwdriver and there are screws all the way around the device. All right, so on the back, when you flip it over, there are eight screws. These four screw holes are going to have long screws and these inside screw holes are going to have shorter screws. So after that, it's pretty simple. You just unscrew all the screws with your Phillips head screwdriver. And thankfully, unlike the Nintendo Switch, these come out very easily. All right, so that's four screws down, four more to go here. I wanna put these as far as I can on the outside. It's not really that hard to tell them apart though because these outside screws are a lot longer. So this is definitely the scariest part of the entire process. You have to break the little seal around the entire device that holds the back panel on. The first thing I would use is this plastic pry tool. This comes with the iFixit kit. You're basically going to use this pry tool to pry up the first corner of the back, starting around the trigger. It'll get way easier as you move your way down the device. So you just wanna apply a little bit of pressure with the pry tool and then literally just work your way down. Okay, so getting this side part off, this that was a little bit scary. But as soon as it pops out like that, you're pretty much good to go. Then flip the device over. Thankfully, the edge of this back panel goes around the entire outside of the device. So you don't have to work your way in through the middle, which is nice. But yeah, as you can see, once you get the side off and the top off, it really just goes all the way across like that. 
and then there you go. Your Steam Deck's back is off. All right, so the next step involves you guys did more unscrewing. We've got a screw here, we've got a screw at the top, and we've got a screw under this little piece of tape. We've gotta take all of those off to remove this shield here, this plate. And these are different screws than the ones on the outside of the device, so make sure you keep these separate. And don't pull this aluminum tape all the way off because you're going to have to reapply it later. All right, and then when you've got that third screw out, you've gotta take off this whole plate here. It should come up on its own. Yep, super easily. And then you can see all this adhesive here, put it off to the side. And now we have access to the NVMe SSD. Even if you have the 64 gigabyte Steam Deck, this is going to look like a little SSD, even though it's a much slower drive than the one you'll find in the 256 gig and 512 gig model. You need to also make sure you keep this silver tape that's around the drive. So do not get rid of that. Now the next step is to unplug the battery because hot swapping SSDs is a really bad idea. So what we're going to do here is just, you can grab this little ribbon here to do it. All right, so I've got the battery entirely disconnected. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just hit the power button a few times to make sure all the juice is out of the device. Because again, you do not wanna be hot swapping an SSD with any power in the device. All right, so that should be more than enough here. And next up, we've got to unscrew the NVMe screw that's holding it down. And again, this is a different screw than the other screws. So make sure you keep this separated from the other ones. You can see that the drive pops right up. I'm gonna keep calling it an NVMe drive even though it's really not, I don't think. It's like flash storage. It just slides right out of the device. Then you slide off this tape here and underneath is this 64 gigabyte drive. Moving that over to the side, I am now going to take my other drive, my 256 gigabyte drive and slide on this tape here. And then I'm gonna slide it right back into place where it belongs. Should pop right in just like that. I'm gonna push it down and then I'm going to screw back in the screw that holds it down. Now that the NVMe drive is in place, we've gotta reconnect the battery. Like everything else in this is hopefully not easier said than done. Just wanna be really careful here. It's not a lot of clearance in this device, obviously, cause it's a handheld. Okay. Then I'm using my fingernail slide it right back in. Okay, so you can see that the battery is plugged in now, and now the next step is to re-put on this shield here, which, man, this is not the hardest thing I've ever done, but I will say I am sweating a little bit because these things are so hard to get. If I break it, I don't know what I'm gonna do. All right, so I'm gonna start out with this aluminum shielded screw here, just cause I wanna get that sticker back on as fast as possible. And again, I'm not going super tight, just enough, because if I ever have to do this again, I don't wanna strip the screw. And again, I am left-handed, so I apologize for this being a little bit shaky. And with that, we have successfully replaced the drive in a Steam Deck. Now I understand why Valve says most people should not do this, but that was not too terribly tough. We'll see if this thing works at the end of it to determine if anyone should actually do this, but as of right now, we've got the new drive in there. And of course, because this is a brand new drive, it does not have SteamOS on it, which is why we created that boot drive. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna replace the back of the device. I'm gonna snap it all back into place here. Wait for that satisfying pop. And it goes on a lot easier than it came off. So I'm just gonna give it one more nice little rigid push all the way around the device. And with that, our Steam Deck is back together. Now we go through the long, arduous process of screwing everything back in. I think I'm gonna wait though until I get everything installed just in case I need to take this thing apart. All right, so now obviously the next thing we have to do is reinstall Steam OS. I'm gonna take that boot drive I made, I'm gonna plug it in here to the USB-A to USB-C uh, adapter. All right, so next we need to get it into recovery mode. So the next thing we're going to do is hit the power button and the minus button at the same time. And when you hear the boot up sound, that's when you let go of the power button, but make sure you keep holding the minus button. So I heard it, letting go. Holding the minus button still, just tilting it down so you can see the screen. And it should boot right up. 
All right, so here we are inside the Steam Deck Boot Manager. You can see the EFI USB device, which is my thumb drive. We're gonna use the D-pad to select it and then hit A, and it's going to boot Steam OS off of the USB stick. And then you're gonna see four options here. Since this is a brand new SSD, we are going to use the right touchpad to select re-image Steam Deck. And then after you select it with the right touchpad, click on it with the right trigger to start the re-imaging process. And it lets you know this action will re-image the Steam Deck. This will permanently destroy all data on your Steam Deck and reinstall Steam OS. This cannot be undone. That's what we want to do here. So I'm going to bring the little mouse cursor down with the touchpad. I'm going to hit the right trigger to proceed. And it's going to run through the entire thing here. Okay, so now the re-imaging is complete. That took honestly about two minutes and we're just gonna highlight proceed, hit the right trigger, and then it's going to restart your Steam Deck. All right, and then after it restarts, you are back on the first main menu as if it's a brand new Steam Deck. So I'm gonna run through this process really quickly. Now it is doing its first time install. It says it's gonna take about three minutes. Last time I did this about four days ago, it went a lot quicker than that. But if you are paying attention, I have a code on the screen right now for a Steam copy of the first person shooter Dusk. Thanks for watching towards the end of the video. Now you just got super lucky. All right, so the Steam Deck is doing its first time update and I am ready to say that this device is upgraded. The SSD upgrade is complete. That got a little sweaty at some points, but overall I would call that about a medium difficulty process. The hardest part, honestly, was getting the back of the device off. So once again, I would recommend having one of these little plastic pry tools. But once I got it off, it was pretty much smooth sailing from there. If you like this video and you wanna see more, it would really help me out if you subscribed. And also if you're feeling really nice, set your notifications to all.